Excellencies, Commissioners, um, I'm extremely happy to be here and of course my first words of thanks uh, uh, to our gracious host and chairman, Mr. Carlos Slim, for this opportunity. I would like to thank him also for giving us uh, a gift uh, yesterday of taking us uh, to the Aldea uh, village. Uh, I don't think there could have been a better welcome, welcoming event than visiting uh, this village. And um, if I was given the floor yesterday uh, to this event, uh, probably I would have uh, uh, said uh, uh, how wonderful it was uh, to have this Aldea village in the center of the city, in front of an ancient cathedral. And just crossing the street, uh, of course, the cathedral is a World Heritage Site, being from UNESCO, I, I want to emphasize this and to, uh, and to say that it was Mexico. It was just ancient and modern. It was uh, 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 pre preserving its uh, heritage, but it was also a leap in the future. And I would like to congratulate both Carlos and the minister uh, for this uh, um, uh, good cooperation of, uh, of public-private partnerships. Uh, uh, and also, it was an opportunity to speak about new technologies, about the way forward, about education. And I know how uh, ambitious uh, a reform in education, the Mexican government and the new president, uh, uh, Senor Peña Nieto, has uh, started. And I want once again to say that uh, we are here to accompany uh, you, Mr. Minister, and the president in Mexico in this very ambitious educational reform, where I believe new technologies will, will play a vital role. So, Ladies and gentlemen, the Broadband Commission brings a powerful array of people and experience we have here uh, around this table, both from governments and private sector. And this is, I would say, a unique global alliance to promote broadband for sustainable development. I would like once again to thank our two co-chairs, President Paul Kagame and Carlos Slim Elu, for their leadership. I entirely concur with my dear colleague Hamadun in emphasizing their leadership. We come together guided by a shared conviction. The conviction that we must harness all accelerators to help states and societies reach the Millennium Development Goals and the objectives of education for all by the year 2015. The belief also that new technologies, especially broadband, offer vast potential for more inclusive and sustainable approaches to development. Our position here is quite clear. The global rollout of broadband can help craft the knowledge societies we need for the 21st century by enhancing learning opportunities, by facilitating the exchange of information, by increasing access to content that is linguistically and culturally diverse. The report of the Broadband Commission's Working Group on Education, entitled Technology, Broadband and Education, Advancing the Education for All Agenda, shows the power of new technologies for education. Let me thank once again all the contributors to the report. And let me also emphasize that its conclusions were echoed at the first YCIS Plus 10 review event held at UNESCO last month together with the International Telecommunication Union, the United Nations Development Program, and the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. The final statement agreed at the review event was clear. The key to empowering people for sustainable development and peace is education. Education that reaches out to all members of society, education that provides genuine lifelong learning opportunities for all. Broadband plays a huge role here. It is a transformational technology. But as we never tired in saying, this does not happen by itself. It requires leadership, planning, and action. We cannot just invest in technology. We must invest in ecosystem. Supporting infrastructure must be accompanied by support to applications and services as Carlos just very, I would say, eloquently also stated. It must move forward with investment in relevant content in local languages, drawing also on indigenous and traditional knowledge. 
Access alone, we know all that, is not enough. It must be combined by skills with digital literacy. The YSIS Plus 10 review event recognized the work that remains ahead to overcome the digital divide, which risks becoming a development divide to ensure all societies, all women and men, enjoy similar access to the benefits of new technologies. The final statement reaffirmed the principles that guide us. Respect for freedom of expression, as defined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, both offline and online. Respect for cultural diversity, as the foundation for comprehensive knowledge societies. And respect for media pluralism, as well as equal access to education, science and technology, and cultural expressions. In all this, I wish to underline the need to integrate gender equality into our work to promote the global rollout of broadband. We need to empower girls and women with and through new technologies. The world is changing before our eyes under the influence of new technologies. Our task is to harness this power for the benefit of all, to make sure no one is left behind that all societies prosper, that we reach the social inclusion and social cohesion we all want. More and more governments are developing national broadband and ICT strategies. We must help them to overcome the challenges that remain in excess, affordability and quality. And here, I would like once again to thank the President of Rwanda, Mr. Paul Kagame, our co-president for his leadership. I think Africa needs such a leadership in this moment. And we at UNESCO, as long as Africa is our global priority, are ready and stand ready also to work with African leaders to reach out the goals, ambitious goals, that very justifiably they have set for themselves. We need to work in order to enhance, enhance teacher training for the use of new technologies, to promote open educational resources and open access and to make the most of opportunities offered by mobile learning. So, dear friends, the work of the Broadband Commission for Digital Development is essential as we work towards the 2015 deadline of international development goals. It is vital also as we shape the contours of a new global sustainability agenda to follow 2015. I would like to thank you all for your commitment and for your contribution.